Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Brandon Gadula of FanDuel, who's here to give us his favorite plays for this week on the PGA Tour. What's going on, Brandon? Hey, I, you know, just kind of like coming down still from the Masters, but then we we trend into the RBC Heritage, which is like it's a very unique sort of event uh, because we go from you know this week from the Masters where it's all about distance, and now it's about accuracy, and so you get someone like Dustin Johnson. At the top of the field, I mean, his odds on FanDuel Sportsbook have fallen from nine and a half to one to twelve to one, which makes a whole lot of sense uh, based on the course fit. Even though he has fared well uh, at this course, but it's you got to really change your mindset uh, going from you know the biggest major of the year to a course where kind of everyone's in play because nobody's nobody's disqualified from a lack of distance. Yeah, I think you just look at the fields. Also, obviously, the top players in the world all at the Masters. You can't say the same here about the RBC Heritage. But let's get in to your picks. And it's interesting because you're not going to the top of the board. You're starting here at a player who's 23 to 1, and that is Matthew Fitzpatrick. I think that there are there there definitely are some plays at the top of the board I would like probably most specifically Webb Simpson but Matthew Fitzpatrick actually uh you know now 23 to 1 but opened at 32 to 1 uh, and I knew pretty certainly that that number uh would shorten uh as we get further along in the week and it again it is 23 to 1 but I still think that's a good number uh obviously 32 is better but 23 is still good for uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick based on my win simulations Fitzpatrick is an elite Bermuda putter and that's the greens we get this week I've been the 99th percentile versus this field over the past 100 rounds. That data coming from fantasynational.com. Uh, he's someone who can hit fairways at a higher rate, uh, 89th percentile over the past 100 rounds as well. That's a key stat this week. It is more about placement than it is distance. You don't really overpower Harbor Town. You kind of place it, uh, hit your irons well, and, and putt well. Now, Fitzpatrick, anecdotally, because he's English, plays well on the wind. The PGA Tour stats haven't really bared that out necessarily, but I don't think... Uh, the wind splits are super reliable long term. It's a lot of uh, recency, a lot of adjustments that you have to make to trust them fully. But two top 15 finishes here in the past three years. And frankly, just some of the best long term form in the field. Someone who fits nicely, someone who's available uh, at, at a nice number of 23 to 1. So you get a little bit of a discount uh, from that top tier. But Fitzpatrick, definitely someone. Uh, I'm eyeing this week. Matthew Fitzpatrick has had some success here, as Brandon says, and with that form and what he's good at, it kind of works out here. And it's a number that obviously is dropping. He likes it better at 32. He'll still take it at 23, plus 2,300 right now over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Up next is a guy we talk about a lot here on the Hurry Up, and I liked him last week in the Masters. He played well at Augusta, and that's Corey Connors. You can get him right now at 34 to 1 over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Why do you think the RBC Heritage is a spot where Connors could pick up a win? For Connors, it's because he does what you have to do well. Uh, he stripes it uh, off the tee. He's one of the few golfers who's pretty long off the tee, but also accurate. So he can, he kind of can go both ways, which is something that is, is that flexibility is always nice whenever uh, a course requires accuracy, but you know, it doesn't necessarily disqualify distance. It's just more, uh, you don't overpower it again. It, it's more about placement and he can do both. He's just one of seven golfers in the field to rank in the 60th percentile or better in both driving distance gained and fairways gained over the past 100 rounds, according to fantasy national and his putting has improved markedly of late. While he's still a liability on the greens overall, it's becoming less and less of a problem. You're not seeing these huge, huge downswings in his putting, taking him out of events. He's kind of having neutral, slightly positive uh, results on greens. And that is kind of all it, it that might be all it, it takes uh, to separate from the field at, at at Harbor Town this week. Now you could say that he's due for putting regression, but I think it's a bit longer term of a fix than just that. He has four straight top 15 finishes and those stem from good tee to green data. You mentioned I uh, played well at the masters finished eighth there the week before uh, 14th at the Valero Texas open, gaining a ton of strokes from his ball striking. So that strokes gained off the tee strokes gain approach, and then some neutral putting uh, slightly positive putting seventh at the players, another big field, a uh, tough field, and then the Arnold Palmer. So the Arnold Palmer, the players, uh, not the Valero so much, but the Masters, those are good fields. And so Corey Connors does exactly what you need him to do. And that's just hitting fairways, gaining strokes from approach, and hopefully uh, he can keep that putter going. Even in these big fields, Connors has had a bit of success recently, and he just does everything kind of well. And if he puts it all together, it keeps the putter going. He's got a shot at this number here, 34-1. to 1. It's tough to ignore the Canadian, Corey Connors. 
One last player to get to. It's your long shot here, Brandon. And that's Brandon Todd, who's 90 to 1 to win this thing. Why is he a long shot worth taking a chance on? For me, Brandon Todd is just a he's a specialist in a way. You know, he's he benefits whenever distance is not a requirement. It's not this week at Harbor Town. And he's also he gets a big boost when he's putting on Bermuda, and that's what he gets this week. Uh, he ranks in the 25th percentile in strokes gained off the tee and 32nd percentile in strokes gained approach over the past calendar year, based on my recency and field strength adjustments. Uh, but he's 87th percentile around the greens, 98th percentile putting in that sample. So very, very good short game. And he is the absolute extreme when it comes to driving ability. He's in the first percentile in driving distance gained over the past 100 rounds, 100th percentile in fairways gained. And I, you know, talking about the Bermuda splits, 97th percentile putting on Bermuda. So if you want, if you, if your key stats this week are putting uh, and hitting fairways, that is when Brandon Todd can do what Brandon Todd does best. Now he, he has just one start here at Harbor town over the past four years. That was a missed cut uh, last summer, but he lost just one stroke to the field. So it wasn't abysmal by any means. The big problem for Todd, but you kind of get this with any long shot, is there's always something. There's always one reason or another uh, that they are a long shot. For him, it's been the iron play. He's been losing strokes with the approach. Uh, don't have that data for the Masters, of course. Finished 46, though, did make the cut uh, at the Masters, and that, again, is a course that requires distance. So this is a very different setup. 35th at the players by losing 3.8 strokes from approach. Uh, 57th at the Arnold Palmer, losing 2.3 strokes from approach. Uh, and that one, according to Fantasy National. So the irons are a problem, but the irons are also kind of always a problem uh, with Brendan Todd um, until he kind of flips the switch. And sometimes whenever he comes out and, and has his best performances, it's because he can he can gain five, six, seven, eight strokes from approach, be a very plus putter, hit these fairways. And so Brendan Todd at, at, at 90 to one, I think is a very sensible long shot for this week. That's the important word there, sensible, because he could make a few putts. He could get on the fairway. It's what he's going to do with those irons to see if he's going to be able to be successful here this week. As you said, made the cut at the Masters in a tough field. We'll see if he could use some of the momentum that he had last week and you know make it worth our while here this weekend. Even getting us a little bit of a sweat will be worth it at 90 to one. That's going to do it for us here at the FanDuel Hurry Up. Brandon, we appreciate the time. Good luck this week. Thanks. Good luck to you, and I hope we both hit some winners. Absolutely. We'll make it a little fun here this week, coming off a really enjoyable Masters. Tomorrow, Aaron Kate Nolan will join us here on the show, so don't miss that. For Brandon Gadula, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.